so this was a little different because I'm no longer in my crib, not in my living room. We're going to a friend's living room. Now, this one, ooh, so small, but such a giant, I think we had love. First and foremost, bitch don't wear no shoes in my house. <laughs> For as long as I know her, I gotta take my shoes off when I go in there. The most transparent, power, like super powerful, driven by her faith, and doesn't hide anything that she's going through to show that anything is possible. This is gonna be a massive show. Pay attention to this one. It's gonna be big. Listen, we got a lot to talk about. Tell me about it. And you know what's crazy? What's crazy? This is my very first podcast. And it won't be the last. That's a fact. That's a fact. It's gonna get good. <laughs> you ready? I'm not ready yet now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, <laughs> like y'all not ready yet, bro. I don't, this is how we start. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is Rob De La Rosa, the bullheaded Dominican from the Bronx. I am honored and blessed to be in the living room. Well, one of my honestly top five that are alive female friends in the world. Like this is a powerhouse of all kinds. Miss Tara Davis, how are you? How you feeling? I'm an incredible friend, and I'm so happy that you're here. I'm, and you know what? I'm actually super happy that I'm here. And I'm here with some beautiful people in the background. You can't see them. They look better than us. And we look pretty good on camera. I ain't even going to lie to you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not even going to. Yeezy, stop playing. You see him. Yeezy, you see who's on the feet. You get to know his latest sponsor. Stop playing with the people. So here's what I want to give y'all, right? Because God has given me with, like this ability just to remember moments in my life. And there was this one time I was at this event, you know? Uh, I felt like I'd done well in this sales organization. Go up in the stage, the room. It was in New York City. Um, the room was jam-packed. The energy was crazy. I go up there and give a little testimony of what I've been doing, how I've been able to accomplish the success that I was able to accomplish. And I felt like, you know, like I did something. Then there's this little five-foot, petite little girl <laughs> that goes up there, gives a testimony, and I look over like, yo, that's a man in a little in a woman's body, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like... Who is that? Just captivating. So crazy. that From that moment on, I said, who is she? I got to meet her. And when we connected, this is the power behind our relationship. We weren't on the same organization. We didn't benefit from our sales. We didn't benefit from our successes. But we knew that our stories together were bigger than our stories individually. And there was a time we were running for uh, a rank called regional marketing director. All right. All right. For the sales company, sell in travel. And then I thought I was going to be the first. I was confident I was going to be the first. You know, me and Tara just kept checking in. I called you. So how close are you? How close are you? How close are you? And this one time I'm confident I got her smoke. I remember it was like 100 sales. And I called T and she goes, 25. I said, what? What? And from there I knew that there was something special behind T. I want to know what... What calibrates you this way? Like, why are you so driven? Give us more kind of your background first. So she don't come from sales, which is the crazy part. Right. All right. Um, I want to kind of the world know who you are, where you come from, and we'll get into, you know, how we got to where we at right now. Right, right. So I come from sales because I'm from Harlem. Mm. Harlem stand up, you know what I'm saying? The sales happening in Harlem. It's <laughs> right. just not the sales that we wear. Right, <laughs> right. So I'm from Harlem, born and raised, and... You know, born and raised in a single parent household. And growing up, I was taught, you know, you got to go to school, get good grades, get a good job. And it seemed to be okay until I got to a point where my life wasn't changing as fast as I thought it should. Mm -hmm. With that being said, I've always been a risk taker. I'm a Gemini. I don't know if that means anything to some people. But, you know, I <laughs> my belief in myself, there's nothing in this world that I believe in more than God and in me. Mm -hmm. And I've always had that, and I just needed the right vehicle or opportunity to be able to shift that. And so I say all that to say, you know, uh, I went to John Jay College. I got my bachelor's degree, my master's degree. Hold up. 
I graduated magna cum laude. Hold up. Maintained well over a 3.5 GPA. Hold up. Worked for the city of New York for 10 years. What else? And then I got to that point where I just hit that brick wall and I said, all right, God, there has to be something else. And that's when I was introduced to the industry that you and I met in. Got introduced to the industry, never did anything like it. But I said, at the end of the day, you know, something has to give. 100%. And when I got started, you know, one of the things that we can, you know, pretty much relate to is the fact that it was a lot of non-believers. Of course. You know, there of was course. a lot of you got to figure things out on your own. Mm -hmm. And I really am just the type of person where I'm going to get it one way or another. Failing is not an option. Mm. I but. Again, my belief in me is so big that I just refuse to lose. And so I have that competitive spirit in me in everything that I do. Let me just say something right now for those who are listening or watching this. Those are not just words. So I'm going to peel some of that onion back really quick, right? Because when she tells you all these accolades, it's not to show off. It's the truth. But here's what I also know. In part of your journey, in the quest of you getting your goals by any means necessary, I know there was a time where you had options to either... Be at a place or pay your rent, all right, to either get that done. Coming home to an eviction notice. Wow. Yeah, I know my people. Wow. You remember that? Yeah, I remember that. It was just vivid. And I think society today has gotten sexy to say things that sound sexy. Oh, I'm driven and I work hard and by any means necessary, I really want to tap, tap like I really want to get into Tower Story because a fighter when she says belief in God and herself, her story is, has so much depth. So I want to kind of touch on how you felt. Like, I can't even fathom seeing an eviction notice and saying, do I do this or do that? Like, what, what is your mind at times like that, T? And what are, you, what are you doing to say, okay, how do I regroup? Let me get centered. Like, what is your, is there a system that you have? Or I would like to get into that. So failing is not an option. So when my back is up against the wall, I feel that at times I can produce a lot better. For example, there would be times where I would know the entire semester in college there's a paper due. It's 30 pages. I have the entire semester to do it. Mm. I do the paper or I would start the paper 24 to 48 hours before Always get the A. I was failing. I was failing. I was, <laughs> always, <laughs> I was getting the A. Always, always get the you A. You was that right? friend. So that may not be conventional, but I think right. there's a level of creativity and there's a level of tenacity and there's a level of I just don't give a F mm -hmm. that by any means necessary, I'm going to get it done. And so when we speak about this eviction notice, I literally had to decide if I was going to pay my rent or if I was going to go to an event that could potentially take me to my next level. Mm -hmm. And truthfully, it was a world of the unknown because I had never done anything like this. So I went off of the faith of my friend and my belief in God and I said God if this is for me you will reveal it and it's crazy mm. when you put things into the universe it has a way of paying you back mm. I remember going from saying I don't have the money to if I just get a little bit of money I promise to use it towards this mm. all of a sudden a random check comes in the that's mail that's so big that's sudden, so big I can delay some bills Ooh, hope y'all listening and all of a sudden the universe starts to meet me where I'm at and I look up and I said God I said that if you showed me a way I would walk through the door mm. and that's exactly what I did mm. I go to this event it's in Nashville Tennessee I'm I'm hype. I'm excited. Never seen anything like it. Come back with my luggage, walking up my fifth floor apartment in Harlem to an eviction notice on my door. And I'm mm -hmm. like, you know what? The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And I know that when you are close to something amazing, there will always be opposition. You got to mm -hmm. get tested. That was my test. Mm -hmm. Without, the t well, ain't no testimony without the test is what That's they say. So then, boom. Just is what it gets good. You ready? Because <laughs> if y'all listen, there was so much there. And I hope y'all just catching what's going on, man, because this, I watched it. She goes from an eviction notice to, you remember, so here's what I saw you post the other day. When she talks about her accolades and how she works for the city, your, your salary for that job was what, 26000 26000 26000 okay. A year, for in a, a year. In a year. Mm -hmm. And as for as long as I know my friend, in the living room we're in right now, from what I remember, rent's like twenty five. When you first got here. Now it's about twenty seven fifty. Twenty seven fifty. So we're in this living room. Now think about this. I know for sure I'm in front of a, a powerhouse that in earnings and in income has cleared. I'm talking your numbers. We don't want to you don't have to get too crazy. We don't want to. Yeah, you see how really high she's sophisticated? 
I don't know when's the last time Tara was doing less than ten, fifteen thousand dollars a month. That's correct. I don't know. Me I, neither. I don't recall. And I'm grateful. Like twenty six thousand a year. The ten years. What? How many years of school was that? Oh, child. About eight, maybe. Eight years of school to get an offer letter or what they want to give you in a year. I know for sure she's been doing it in a month. Chill, can I get a clap? Can I get some noise? Can I get some for that right there? The e? Oh, man. So, look. This is what I love about um, who you've been. Because you also attracted so many powerful people. Um, one of them. Is my Shout out to my boy, O. You know what I'm saying? Um, not only in business, but a, a great partner. And I was, you know, fortunate enough to see my guy get down on one knee in Fiji. Right? Yes. So, um... But here's what I know, too. You know, you've always been a person to carry yourself. I want the ladies to hear this. Tara's never been a person I felt like or gave any kind of energy where you think you could come talk to her because she's a girl. And, yeah, you better come with a with your belt on right and your tie up straight when you come talk to this woman. I feel in business, a lot of women think, I don't want to generalize, but I've seen where women get uncomfortable when men approach them. Or could get distracted because now they're getting attention from not the right man and how to maneuver that way. Or even get addressed like, what's up, love? How you doing? When you're trying to con conduct business. And you've always been a catalyst. Like, this is how you make sure men address you. And I kind of want you to speak to the woman on the head real quick. Because then it comes the right man. Yo, oh, I can't wait to see you, boy. We got to do this as well. Um, so I want you to kind of touch on that a little bit. You know, yeah, Where did you get that from? Like, who taught you that? Was that Harlem as well? Um, you know, what's funny is that when I got in the industry that we met in, the bottom line is that I didn't have a female mentor. I was looking for a female mentor. I was surrounded by, by a bunch of men. And men, you know, have that level of aggression. But mm -hmm. I also have a high level of aggression. Mm -hmm. So I pretty much taught myself this. And I said, well, mm -hmm. if I want to be respected in this industry, if I want to not just be looked at. First of all, being a woman in any business is already difficult. Let's, mm, just, true. let's, just, let's just make that clear, okay? There is a salary difference. You know, a man could be making 100000 They want to pay us 60000 So if we're just going to be crystal clear, if I already have that against me, that's one strike. I'm not also going to make the strike of getting into business with a man only because we could do something physical only for that to backfire. Mm. You know, I always said I didn't want to be the woman where when I was crossing stage in my business, there's like 50 men or 20 men in the front row that could be like, yeah, we've been there, done that. Because at that point, my value <laughs> goes down. And I think one of the biggest mistakes that women make, and I really just feel it goes back to our paradigm, has everything to do with the fact that women need to know a man is not a financial plan. They One are more not, time. A man is not a financial plan. Hello. I come from a lineage of strong women. My grandmother, my mother, every woman that I know has held their own. Mm -hmm. I can't even fathom not being able to do for me what I need to do for me. Mm -hmm. So I feel like when you have the mindset that, that you're going to get it no matter what, a man is an addition. Mm. OK, he's 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 at the end of all be all. Mm. And it's funny because in business, because I met my fiance Omar in our business, what would happen is most women when they get into it. Now, I'm not going to say most. I'm not going to generalize. But I've seen women get into relationships and immediately they they lose themselves. 100 percent. Oh, my gosh. You know, now it's all about him. Uh, it's never about me. You can't take business calls. You got to cook. You got to clean. Listen, eat a bowl of cereal if you have to, because I got to go get this money. Yo, and teach. And look. And she shoves up a meal. You heard? It's not. I'm letting y'all know. I'm letting y'all know who this is. Like she's giving y'all cloth talk for real because I watched her do it. And we in the in, we talking about the industry of network marketing, by the way. Right. Um, which we both came out of, and it was a great ex it, for the most part. It was a beautiful experience right. to even meet people and see people like this. And she is nailed on the head when she's. I've seen it. Right. I've seen it. And this is what I even want to get to. And this is where it's powerful, what I want to understand. Because for me, outside looking in, keep in mind, these are really good. I know these people very well. You here pursuing your dream. Then Omar leaves and goes to L.A. You know what's funny? A lot of people don't even know that me and Omar have been in a long-distance relationship for the last two years. Yeah, one more time. Because that's something that we don't display. So here's my thing. You invite people into what you want them to know, what you're selling to them, right? Mm. There was a point even where on social media, this is not a bad thing, but on social media, we were always posting each other. We really got to a point where we say, you know what? We want to create our own brands individual from each other because although being in a relationship is amazing, I'm an individual first. I'm not his coattail when he's not mine. Mm. I'm not going to be Omar's wife. 
Mm. You know what I mean? So I say that to say that, uh, but the flip side of it too is that it takes a very confident man too. See, because I mean, Omar has a level confident. of confidence that a lot of men do not have. You know, when we were, when I was going crazy hard in our first, you know, uh, business to the point where I'm up and I'm working and That's I'm working fact. with men two, three in the morning. That's a fact. All I would do is get a phone call and I said, babe, are you hungry? Did you eat? So I didn't get a call. Let me ask you a question. I'm, talking, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry because the level of jealousy that exists in this world, mm -hmm. okay, the level of property your mind, this is how it's supposed to be. It was a time where y'all were clashing, like looking at both of you guys, I, and this is what y'all did very well, and you speaking on not keeping each other on social media, I think this is huge because for the generation coming up, if you, if me and you got a problem because I ain't comments on your fucking picture, and we could curse on this one too, you heard? Oh, okay, cool. We don't understand each other's in a relationship, so to see that, like what was the conversation behind you running with men 2 o'clock in the morning. Right. Oh, confidence, cool and smoother than a motherfucker. You understand? Right. But what's the talk? Like, is there, where was the where was the also collision? for me, Omar's in the studio 2, 3, 4, 5 this in the morning. Fact. Guess what? I'm not pressing O. See, mm. but where that comes from is having your own. You see, the only person who has to worry about, so if I didn't have my own, I'm worried about the next female taking my man because he's my cash cow. So if I have a level of dependency, we talk, are we talking? If I today? have a level of dependency in my man mm. to where my life can't exist without him, I'm very jealous, and I have to clock what he's doing or who he's with and how he's doing it. Mm. But when you got your own, you want to be with someone. You don't have to be with someone. Mm. I'm learning here. If you get your pens and papers <laughs> out, because I'm learning. That's a that's that's a that's, fact. that's really what it is. So if the question is if we ever had a clash in business, no, because we had conversation. And that's the other thing too, is that there's no assumptions in relationship. So when we got together, I made it very clear what was important to me. I made it very clear what was priority for me. Mm -hmm. I made it very clear that my business was everything for me. And Omar never got in the way of that. Omar, if anything, was like, What do you need me to do to make sure that you can even thrive even you know further? Mm -hmm. But I mean, I've also been in relationships in the past where the person I was was what was actually pretty jealous. So you also got to know what you're dealing with. Mm. No, that's just, this is true. So now, this is what I want to get into right here because what's special behind me and Tara's relationship is not only have we been in business together, happy, we done traveled the world together, mm -hmm. etc. but we also been in rooms crying, lost in our business at some point. You know, T, I remember, see, T, don't, don't remember, I remember these kind of things where we're in the room it's high level leadership room. Mm -hmm. Not everybody gets to be in this room. Mm -hmm. And I think the first time I saw vulnerability, where you get up and you like, you know, I'm just not. I'm not. I'm in a funk. I don't feel it anymore. I don't know what to do. Um, but this is what I also saw. If y'all can help me, please do. You've been a powerhouse, and I'm talking about that Johnny meeting. When we first all we was we was we got to a place we were known and it was like, but to even ask those questions and I don't know if you remember what time I'm speaking on, but you were you were at a point where you was kind of not into you weren't yourself a hundred percent, and you being a person that's always strong and focused, I'm just kind of see, you know, what's the practice behind? Okay, how do I get back in the group? Because then you got right back to it, kind of deal. Is it conversations with certain people? Is it something you writing every single day? It's, you know, what's that process like? Right, right, right. So I want to say, I think I remember this, but then again, we've been in so many rooms so many together rooms, that it's, true. it's probably hard to pinpoint. What I could say is I've learned in my life to give it to God, but most importantly, learn how to surrender. You know what I think happens sometimes is that a lot of times... In some of our lives, we try to put our sauce on it. We try to put our DNA. We want to fix it. We want to pretty it up. Then when it doesn't work out, we go to God and ask him, why didn't it work? Mm -hmm. I've learned to do the opposite. If I don't consult with God, it's really impossible for me to figure out what like what I need to be doing. Mm -hmm. So people is like, well, let me go see if this is going to work out. Everything hits the fan. God, what happened? No, God, tell me if this is right. Mm -hmm. And then I know that if you... Give, like, like I know you'll give me the vision. I know you'll give me the resources. Mm. I know that once you co-sign it, I don't have to worry about the how. Mm. And Deep. I say that because, you know, going to what you said, like, like, like how do I snap out of it, is normally a conversation with God. And it's normally a conversation of I will surrender. And when I let my guard down, 
is when things start to manifest the way that it should. I love this conversation so much. So, look, for you, for those listeners that are listening right now, we don't know what your belief is. You know, maybe it's the universe. Maybe it's something else. Just knowing that I believe it's something higher than me, something higher than us. To be a person who, you know, never did sales before, but sales come from Harlem, but it was in the industry to be a student, to make 26000 that year, to be doing that in a month, to then find a, have a jealous boyfriend in the past, and I have a fiancé who has his own. This has to be someone navigating that you can speak to. And now we get to the juicy part. Okay. Okay. The world had to learn how to transition in 2020, pandemic, et cetera. We've been doing it before then. We've been doing it before uh, in big ways, right, where you go from making, and look, Tara's a very private person. As you can see, when I try to mention her income, it was like, here we go. Which I like, <laughs> like, do we got to go there? And I want to just not to entice anybody, to show proof of what happens to people that focus in the industry. Look, anything works that you really put your mind to. It really does. You know what I'm saying? You got to plan these outlets are there for you to work, but you got to work them. At a level, she was working them. Two o'clock in the morning, having conversations, really did those things. So it's no surprise to where she at today and what's happening today. But to then come to a place where you got to go and say, oh, wait, we may have to do something different. At a whole, at a, you know, one day to another. Some people had to learn how to transition when the pandemic hit. You know, your business had to be closed or you can no longer go to work because you're not vaccinated. Well, you not even want to bring that into the, you know, YouTube chill out, bro. But you know what I'm trying to say? Like, we had to learn how to pivot even though when things look one way and straight. I was in, look, man, I was in a room where you got the news for the first time where it's like, yo, we about to do something different. And saw how it weighed on you. The weight. Say one thing about Tara is she's tough, but the way she loves is tough. Like, loves so hard. So I seen the shock firsthand, right? And the way you really took centered and said, "Yo, hold up, give me a sec." Because with one thing about Tara, she's very prepared. Like, is a person that strategizes <laughs> deeply. Get like, yo, back. yo, like T, like yo. You know how you got a friend? You know got that friend that you want to call you, but she don't call you, but sends you an essay, and it's all correct, too? There's no errors in the message? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> That's her. Like, she's going to school. Let's talk about your transition period, all right, where not only where you have to go and decide to go do um, a new company, but other levels of transition that we'll get to later. What was your initial reaction, okay? Second... The fear, was there fear, right? Um, and if there was fear, how did you overcome it? What did you do to conquer it? You know, and, and how did that lead to where you're at today? So instead of talking in circles, which is not quite what we're doing, but I'm going to say this, right? Talk blunt. Let's talk blunt. Let's, let's just go to it. Bottom line is we're part of a company for seven years. We are running upwards of well over 20K a month in the company, well right? Over. Well over $20,000 a month. There's a certain lifestyle that has acquired because of that. Mm -hmm. And now we get news that the company is actually not doing what they're supposed to do. The company is going down financially. Mm -hmm. And by the way, everybody that's a part of the company is about to also lose their big check. 100%. So you're going from looking at over 20K to what you're going to do tomorrow. What you're going to do tomorrow. And let me tell you something. Stop. That because some of you are complaining about something way smaller. Way smaller. A fucking text message that he didn't send. Uh, some bullshit like that. And someone is doing 20 a month gets news like, what you going to do next month? You could continue, please. Okay, so at that point, um, it felt like a it felt like a near-death experience. Not for real, though. I, I turned white. You, you know what it is? <laughs> the, like, the crazy part is that I had never... Okay, so... Yeah, you should have a plan A, B, C, D, E, right. F, and D. Right. But I had never, I never thought that the rug was going to be pulled from up under me, and I, honestly, it was as bad as probably somebody like like being cheated on. All right, right. It, it was, was one of those things. No, it real felt it like... was it was one of the highest levels of deceit that I've ever experienced in my life. For sure. Because just a day prior, you were smiling in my. F it was oh, crazy. How about how about the Christmas we were supposed to have? And you're gonna have a Christmas. How about this? How about it was the best thing that ever happened to me? Because Say that this, again. How about it was the best thing that ever happened to me? Because through that, I built my own personal brand. Ooh. And you know what? Maybe if maybe I wouldn't have been so focused mm. on building my personal brand if mm. that twenty k a month was so consistent. But she just told you at the beginning how you know she. Mm. You see how that <laughs> just ties? That's literally I seen the example. 
For real, because you are a brand. Like, what people didn't, when we hear that, you are your brand, you are your brand. And when I think of Tara, I think about persistence, resiliency, honesty, direct, hardcore, and willing to do whatever it takes. Like, you said that at the beginning, but that was literally what you had to do. So, like, you know, sometimes the worst thing that happens to us is the best thing. But let me tell you this. So the question was how, right? So first of all, I want to say that I refuse to believe it. I was in denial. In denial. The very well, first heavy. thing was I was in denial. I wanted no parts of us transitioning. I never thought about it. My question was who would follow? You know, I knew that I had what it took, but also I was afraid of being a public failure. Mm. Why? Because I had built my brand up so much. There mm. were the people who didn't believe in the beginning, let's say seven years prior. So I felt like it was going to come off as a laughing stock of an I told you so. Mm. But I'm like, damn, if you're going to say I told you so and I'm making 20K and you barely making two, fuck you. Mm. OK, let's just talk about talk that. Talk about it. Because people talk a lot of shit. You ain't a tenth of what I'm doing. Listen, bye bye. Listen, stop listen. it. If, if I've been able to make this. And you still got something to say. You know what? It's cool. Facts. So first, I had to also realize that shit happens. I'm going to tell you that most, the biggest thing for me was I've built this reputation. I've built this brand. But it kind of goes back to what I said in the beginning because God could do all things but fail. Mm -hmm. So I also knew that because it wasn't my fault that this had happened, God was, God was not going to allow me to fall to the point where I would fall flat on my face. What he's never going to do is make me a public failure. Mm. That I know. Mm. So it took me some time to get it. Mm. I still tried to fight to keep the company. Okay. But it'd be like fighting for a man who's cheating on you. Sis, you want an STD? What you want to do? Ooh. So I said, eventually, Ooh. I'm going to have to go let this go. Go get checked up, please, by the way. I'm, I said, listen, I was like, I'm going to have to let this go. Hardest thing I've had to do, I didn't even want to, you know, come out that we had transition or I was in the middle of a transition. Mm -hmm. I was secret society. Everybody around me now, we make the transition someplace new. Everybody is like, this is what I'm doing. And I'm like, not me. Like, Moving I like was James just, Bond. but That's you know what's fact. crazy? It was the double betrayal because what ended up happening is we were in, a, uh, we were on a trip. It was like November uh, 2019 and we were in the Bahamas and I was supposed to have a check deposited into my account for maybe like about 14,000. And, okay. um, they uh, ended up pulling a plug, didn't deposit the check, mm -hmm. and basically just said, we're not depositing the check because we think that you are doing something else. I remember else. this. Um, and you know what? Told, that's so crazy. Yeah, that's At that crazy. point, it was like Meek Mills. If I ever go broke, I'm mm, going to take your money, right? Let's so talk about at that. that point, <laughs> at that point, it was like it's time to turn the fuck up. Right. Why? Because not only are you, mind you, we weren't getting paid for quite a while, there a time. right? There was a time, so... It was a matter of, you know, not only am I not going to pay you what I owe you, but I'm also going to make sure that you can't eat somewhere else. Mm. It felt like modern day slavery to me. Mm. And at that point, I realized that it was I had to choose me. Right. And that was that. And, you know, from that point, I just I just put it in God's hands. And, you know, everything that happened, everything happened where it was supposed to happen. But the crazy part was that there were people who didn't see it or didn't want to believe it. And there were people who literally r ridiculed those of us who made a transition. I'm talking about for seven years, building mm. friendships, All that. building what I thought was relationships, All that. only to be in a place where I don't know you. Right. I'm not fucking with you. Right. So it was so crazy to see the transition of people love you when you could put money in their pocket mm. and hate you when you went to go get money elsewhere. Right. Ain't real friendship. Not at all. So here's, here's what I want to do, too, because I, I feel like I don't want to um, let this go over anybody's head because of our relationship. We're kind of we just kind of going through the, the ropes of what we've been through. It's I'm thinking about the youth right now that um, just because they're not getting the same attention on social media is doing something to their self-esteem. It's doing something to their self-belief. And, you know, someone powerful like you who I've seen, it weighed on you. You know what I'm saying? It really did. And. Um, as you said, you keep being honest on here. You wasn't the one out to have because you were protecting an image. You wanted to make sure you didn't want to, you know what I'm saying? Um, and then when it came down to it, you had to realize. So if you are a person right now who are secretly going through something, maybe it's not business, you know, maybe you're in a relationship you're not supposed to be in. Maybe it's um, uh, something besides financial and you're keeping it to yourself. You're going through that journey and you're making it a bigger monster. Take this as an example because after Tara decides to say, you know what? It's on me. Her, she was already building her brand without it being a brand. And then builds her own brand. All I remember is coming into this apartment. And 
And I'm like, yo, T, this is fire. If you could look at the aesthetics in this bad boy, we definitely not in my crib, you heard? <laughs> <laughs> and I walk in here, and I'm like, yo, this is fly. Where you get that? Oh, you like this? You can get this at my Amazon store. I'm like, oh, you got an app when you did that. So I want to know, when did you decide to say, you know what? I'm going to decide to make myself a brand and why Amazon, like what triggered that? When did that start? And did you, was there a proof, did you and O have a comment? Like who was the first person that knew about you? Andrew? I'm kind of curious to know. Um, so I have a core group. Mm. My core group, my three besties uh, consist of my mother, Omar, and my best friend, Lily, mm. who you will be seeing soon. Lily and Miss <laughs> is the next on here. Uh, you already know. Yes. Love and you. so here's the thing. Like you said, I was already building a brand, and it was really a switch. It was just a switch that had to happen. I ended up having lunch with two of our friends, Javed and Mike. Mm, this was love a, my boys. This was a couple summers Yo, Javed, ago. you see my beard, boy? You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm out here. Yo, Mike, stop playing with me. Go ahead. So, you know, I ended up having uh, lunch with them a couple summers ago. And when we had lunch, it was a conversation of what's next. Mm. And, you know... At one point, it was just all network marketing. Mm -hmm. And I told them that I really wanted to start just, you know, working on my influencing. And they said, well, you can't influence people without talking. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I was always known for my fashion and just taking my pictures and just, you know, being swaggy. Mm -hmm. And I'm That's like, but a I big fact. Harlem in the building, for <laughs> real. <laughs> but I'm like, I don't, I don't want to talk to people online. Like, who right, does right, that? Right, right, right. And I realized that you can't build a relationship without conversation. Mm -hmm. And so they actually planted a seed. And they basically told me, you have everything. We know who you are. We know how you operate. Yeah, I love where this is going. We know the leadership. We know everything. We know how sassy and bossy and how much of a powerhouse you are. But how can somebody know that about you on social media if you never open your mouth? Mm -hmm. And I started to just, you know, go online and just start to speak in my mind. And, you know, I like to drop a few F-bombs. I'm just myself. I'm tar very... Mill. You got to get that tar, man. Listen, you know what I'm I am very much transparent. I'm just straight to the point. I'm Kurt. I'm who I am. Mm -hmm. And what started to happen is I started to just speak my mind on various topics and the outpour of people that connected and gravitated and reposted. And I'm like, I've been like, I've been doing this with my friends forever. Right. And you know, sometimes you don't even realize that you have something that the world needs to see because it's so regular and basic to you, mm -hmm. but it's so big to the world. Mm -hmm. I hope they got a pen of paper. If you listen <laughs> to like, this is real. Go ahead. So I basically just started being me on camera. Mm. And at first it was very uncomfortable, but I started to name that camera roll. Like when the camera was rolling, it's me, right? right? It's me off camera. I talk right. shit on, I talk shit off. I speak my mind. And I started to name that Tara Mail. And it was a point where I was just going and talking. And every time I spoke, I would hashtag Tara Mail. Mm. And I said, and what made me think about it, you know, back in the day there was AIM is like, or AOL. You've got mail. You've got mail. Right, You've got right, mail. Right, right. I'm like, You've got tar mail. Right, 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 right. And that was really the tipping. And so what would happen too was I realized that because I was building relationship, my, you know, following started to increase. My community got bigger. But most importantly, I realized that I had a love for it. I genuinely have a love for just showing up and just being able to give value and add value to whomever because everybody wasn't blessed to have the big sister figure, the auntie figure, right. the person that can kind of, especially women. Right, and I true. feel like I can take on that role, and I've taken on that role. Right. And so that was really what catapulted and started the brand. So tell me about the first thing you decided to put on your store. Like, what was the... Okay, so... And this is... Look, I wanted to just highlight that story. The question I have for the audience is, who are in your circle that can have conversations like that with you when you already feel like you're doing something right, and they question you like, why aren't you doing this? Or how about that? You need those people in your circle. If you don't have those people, go find those people. You know what I'm saying? Because some people that, you know, seem like they got it all going on need to be told different directions and the truth, and they could only get that from people that know their heart, right? right? Know where they're going. So I remember coming in here, like I said, like, yo, this is fly. This is fly. You can get this at my Amazon store. And I even see how you revealed some the coffee maker. Like, I remember it when it started. I'm like, yo, that's a flack. I'm looking for a coffee maker. I'm like, yo, that's a flack. By the way, Bustelo Coffee in here was hot fire. <laughs> <you heard? Yeah. laughs> Top yes. notch. The Borista is here. So what was the first product? Like, give me that. Now it's new. Okay. This is something that you've never done before. Right. So here's Tara 2.0. Right. Because you go from going to school, getting good grades, get a good job. Make this amount. Oh, I'm going to do something I've never done before. Come back to an eviction notice. Back against the wall. Let me go do something. Now you're flourishing in a way that the average person may not ever make. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, mine ever do. Places you've been, the people you touch, the things that you wear, and you're not, you flashy, but it ain't flashy because it's you. Like, you don't rock things. You could do things that you want to do because it's the truth of who you are. I don't even know if that makes sense, but it does if you know Starro. Mm -hmm. And there it goes again and repeats. Your back's against the wall. We about to take it. For, forget about that eviction notice. 14,000 sound more crazy than me. Right. So now 2.0 comes and says, I got to have a conversation a couple years back. So I want to go influence. I start, which is organic. But I want to know the how-to process to some degree of like, okay, why Amazon? Right. Right. Did you did you take a course? What pushed you in that direction? You know, I'm kind of interested to know how you went about right. doing that. So when we transitioned out of the company we were in, I transitioned into a new one. Still in network marketing, still grateful, still love it, but also knew that I had to start preparing for the plan B and C because I couldn't let that happen again. Correct. And I realized that if I was going to do anything, I could make money through me because I could make money for you, but I could make money for me as well. Mm. So what happened is in 2019, uh, quite a few of us ended up going to a Bob Proctor event. Rest, rest in peace, rest in peace because Bob just died Proctor. This past week, right? Rest right? in peace. So we went to a Bob Proctor event. At that Bob Proctor event, he, he, he mind fucked me. There's no other way to say it. Nah, yeah, yeah. Like sure. literally, he he took me to a place mentally that I had never been in, and literally the creativity that that came out of that event was something that I never seen in me before. Mm. One event completely changed my life. And it was so many of that event. I was on a live, by the way. One of, event that was on your table, completely like, mm. changed my no, life. Sure. And what happened at that event was this. Bob Proctor gave everybody there a gratitude journal. If you attended the live stream, you didn't get it. I know. I mean, if you attended I mean, the, yeah. But if you were there in hand, person, exactly. right. If you were there in person, and he also didn't sell the gratitude journal. So you basically couldn't purchase it. You had to be in person. Mm -hmm. It was one per person. Mm -hmm. And what happened is I came home and I started writing in that journal. And every day I would write what I was grateful for. And I was posting it in my Insta story. And every day, tons of people would ask me, where'd you get that from? How can I get it? And I couldn't even refer them to Bob Proctor because most people are not going to pay thousands of dollars for a personal development event. By the way, by the way, thousands of dollars for a personal development. Some of you doing thousands of dollars on a Birkin and she's never going to talk to you. You can't even afford that. Let's not even talk about that. You're putting it on stuff that you ain't never going to see value from, but you won't put value into yourself as you may continue. Sure. So... Thousands of dollars for the event. You can't purchase it. I can't refer it. So I said, anytime in life you see that there's a problem, you should be the solution. Bing. So I said, well, Bob not selling this book. Let me go create my own. Mm. In 2019, I literally started creating the, the idea of no gratitude, no glory. And I also, um, also with no gratitude, no glory, at the time I didn't even have a name. Okay. I didn't have a name, but I knew that I wanted to create a gratitude journal. I knew that, and what's crazy is that I'm so meticulous and persistent and organized mm -hmm. that I still to this day have well over, probably close, I don't know, it's well over 100 people. But I have a lot of people that inquired about the journal who I put on a list mm -hmm. based on Instagram handles, and I said I would reach back out to them. Mm -hmm. Started the process 2019. It was an epic fail. Hired someone. Didn't go according to plan. At the time, my journal was called I Believe It, Therefore I Receive It. What the <laughs> hell was that? Okay. Moving on, right. I put it down. 2020 comes, the pandemic hits, and I'm, I've always been a person that is good at referring people products and things of that nature. So 2020 hits, and I'm like, you know what? Let me check out this Amazon influencer thing. Amazon, uh, someone from the team had reached out to me back in 2015. I declined doing it then, but I say it's a good thing to do now. Mm. I knew I wanted to launch my own product, but I also wanted to test my audience and I wanted to test sales. So I said, if I start selling products that belong to other people, I'll see what my influence is. Mm. That will let me know mm. how, great I, how great I can be at selling my if own product. If y'all paying attention to this thing, is this is the repeat bootstrapping Proof of concept. She's going through the trials and tribulations, testing the waters. That woke up one day and say, hey. Right. She put the work in. I love Before it. Before I launch my product, let me go sell somebody else's. Mm. Let me see how great I am. Let me track the sales. Mm. Let me see how many products I'm selling a month. Let me see, you know, let me see everything. So mm. I said, Amazon is the test. Before I launch anything for me, mm. Amazon starts to do good. The, I mean, my brand just continues to grow. Finally, after two years, because I started with the idea in 2019, I woke up in 2021 and I was like, you being a scrub. 
Mm. 2021, I woke up and I said, if you don't launch the journal this year, God's going to take it from you. Hold on. See, I believe that you are given a vision, but when you don't make a move on it, he gives it to somebody else. I'm talk to I'll be me. Somebody else does talk to, to me. So listen, I just literally woke up and I was like, I'm going to do this. Mm. I started to move towards this and I could just tell you that when you make a decision, everything else will meet you in the process. Mm. Uh, June 19th, which is my birthday, I actually launched No Gratitude, No Glory. There's so much that happened with that. I want to talk about it. I see you was about to stop it. We're going to talk about it. <laughs> Don't do that. That's what I was waiting for because here's the theme of Tara's story. Look, you can see the light and the love and the joy and don't even want to address things that don't even matter because she handled it already. But I was there for this as well. So it's an all white party. Mm -hmm. It's an all white event. We're nor I'm ecstatic. I'm like, oh, it's T, it's the family. Because if Tyler's going to do something, it's going to be, listen to me, let me tell you. From Listen, I done seen this woman set up trips for over 400 people. To It's a, it's not a game. This is the real deal right here. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, Tyler's doing a party? All right, cool. We got to get there. We're gonna, I made sure I was lit before I got there. Because that's how much fun I was having. And then there comes the other obstacle. We're in there, we're having fun, we're celebrating. And I want you to get into this story. Because, as a matter of fact, let's go there. How much did you pay, you know, for your party? My party was $16,000. It was actually a birthday book launch. So I was celebrating my 35th chapter, 35th mm. year of life. I called the chapter because I'm launching my gratitude journal. Mm. It was a secret. Nobody knew what I was I launching. I had no idea. Okay, so what I did was I got all my friends, I mean family, people. I, I have friends come up from Puerto Rico, L.A., um, Texas, everywhere. Florida, everywhere. People and 100 people. And I reach out to I, don't, I can only put 100 people on the list, but mind you, I have way more. And everybody confirms I'm going to be there. People are booking flights to come to my launch, not knowing what I'm launching. Correct. So now I have all eyes on me. And what's funny is I, I, I just wanted my people to show up. If you notice, Rob, there was nothing attached to it. All I wanted you to do was show up. Facts. I said, show up. Nobody knew I was putting on a $16,000 event. Nobody knew it was going to be, you know, I mean, you guys knew eventually that it would be catered with food. Right. But ultimately, I said, I just want to put on for my friends because I love my friends. And um, $16,000, the party was an epic fail. Event planner flopped. Uh, the party didn't even look like it was $3,000. If that, if we're going to keep it real. Thank God it was at a nice venue. But. I was supposed to have like an eight or ten foot book. Um, there was supposed to be so much. And the day of the party, it was like one of the worst days of my life. Mm -hmm. And I cried at my party. Yeah, I, I literally had to cry, get on my mic. I didn't have enough seating and plates. And I mean, it was it was it was the it was a night from hell. It was a disaster. And I remember, you know, when I realized that everything was taking a turn for the worse. I said, I got to tell my guests because I'm so transparent that it was no way possible that I can. You guys had no idea that shit was fucked up. No, You guys had no idea we so what much, was missing. I was having so much fun. I'm like, night of hell. It was such a great night. Right. <laughs> I was right. like, this is what hell looked like. Right. <laughs> I was having so much <laughs> and, fun. And, you know, aesthetically, again, the venue was good. But, yep. again, I knew what was supposed to be and there. And standards. Le ladies and gentlemen, this is what I mean by standards. I think um, I read one time um, anything could change with perception or with perspective. Right? So, if you change your perception on what's going on, you know, other things happen for the better. Tara's expectations and standards are very high. So she had to let it out. She cried. I didn't even know you had an eight-foot book. I'm listening. Go ahead. My right. Yeah. So, you know, it gets to a point where I didn't even know how bad things were until I got there. And people, you know, like my friends uh, or people who were behind the scenes helping out were basically telling me was, and peeling it. Yeah, people were peeling it and, and laying it on me. And I just get to a point where I'm like, well, I got to tell my guests because I feel terrible. Get on the mic, you know, come downstairs and tell you guys I don't have enough seats. I don't have enough this. I don't have enough that. The event planner literally left. Right. Um, she left like a thief in the night. Didn't tell me anything and just literally was scared. And I basically just got on the mic and told you guys and I cried. And, you know, the beautiful thing about that is that everybody got in. Everybody decided to chip in in terms of being helpful. Like, sure. literally, y'all had to move the downstairs furniture upstairs, upstairs so that we could all sit in a room to eat. Mm -hmm. And you know what I learned in 2021, my 35th year of life, is that everything I, I thought I needed, I already had. Mm -hmm. It was love. It was friendship. Mm -hmm. It was loyalty. It was people. Mm -hmm. And 
why did I put on a $16,000 event to launch a gratitude journal? Because who the hell does that? <laughs> right. Well, how you do anything is how, how you, you do, do everything. everything. My brand is very important to me. I'd be damned if I could invest in everything else around me, but I can't invest in my brand. Mm. And that's probably one of the things that separates me from people because they talk a lot of shit and they want to give their, their life the bare minimum. Mm. Your website look like shit. You look like shit. Mm. You post anything. You do anything. You don't want to hire nobody. Their breath smell like shit. Everything is like shit. God, God. Right? If you're not investing in you, why would somebody want to spend money with you? How could I ever ask somebody to spend money with me and I can't even invest in me? Didn't have to be sixteen thousand right. dollars. But the point is, I have no regrets because you know what? I made back over twenty nine thousand selling my product. That wasn't that that night. It wasn't that night. I, I feel like you sold that first of all. This book right here. <laughs> it wasn't that night. I'm, all I know is, all I know is, I couldn't go and order it fast enough on my phone. Um, I'm super grateful, super, super, <laughs> super, super, listen, the way to start your morning, um, cause this is something like journaling is something that I took on heavy after 2017, big, like here's another thing I want to tell y'all, um, I, we, we could go deep. We could just keep this simple on the surface. Thoughts become things. The first form of a thought becoming a thing is when you put it on paper. That's a it's fact. It's in your mind. Now it's, it's visible. It's on paper. It's the first step. So to exercise that, the first thing in the morning, you can then manifest things on a grand scale. That's what I believe. You proof of that. You know what I'm saying? Um, go get yourself one of these. I'm telling you, you will not. Well, by the time this airs. Talk to me. I don't think they'll be able to get it, but Why? prayfully so. Why so? Why is that? Why? Because... Sold out? Uh, well, I saw, we sold out of 447 copies within One more two time. weeks of having it. One more it. time. 447 copies within two weeks of actually having a journal physically. And you know what's crazy is that I, did, I didn't have the marketing. So that was without the book launch because the book launch was a fail, right? At least to me. Okay. I didn't post anything about the book launch. So this is without the launch, the $16,000 launch. Got you. We I didn't even know that. Able. So so the and purpose of the launch was promotion for this. Correct. But this still sold out. And the launch didn't really happen. Bro. So that was the first shipment. Literally right now in my office, there's another shipment of 400. And I plan to sell that this weekend. I plan to be sold out of 400 this weekend. And then moving on to the next version. And in the process of, listen, because this is not, again, your standards, how you do anything, how you do everything. I've watched a video of you literally packing these bad boys, shit, like turning your crib into the warehouse, for real, shipping them out, et cetera. Talk to me about that process. Like, what's your day like now, T? My day is all things crazy. Um, I could just tell you that I love it. I love the grind. I love being hands-on. I love being a part of everything. <laughs> I believe that showing the process is so important. Mm -hmm. You know, people want to pop up on social media or in life as an overnight success. You mm -hmm. know what I find? I find that when you take people along for the journey, there's a level of ownership with your community. And people feel like people are actually more invested as opposed to if you just pop up today and now it's like, hey, guys, look at what I've done. It, and buy my stuff because right. this is how I did it overnight. Right. And so what happens is that there's, there's also a sense of what? And, you know, you can attract that hate and that envy to you. Not saying people don't do it anyway, but what I feel is that showing people the process, I'm also letting them know that it's possible. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to be a part of my entire process because I won't always be packing books in my two-bedroom. And I need to remember what that feels like. Mm. So when I have the warehouse, I want to remember what it was like when I was in here packing books with my mother and my best friend's mother. And so I'm documenting my journey, maybe for my children's children's children. I don't know, but I'm documenting it for somebody. The value of what I gave in this first book, I gave you guys a gel pen. I gave Can we you, talk about? Yes, let's talk about that. I gave you guys a gel pen. The, listen, I, I never wore, let me just say this. I never bought a pair of Jordans in my life. And I felt like I caught the Jordan exclusive that nobody could catch. Packaging was, I was, it's, it's like the opening and it is an experience within itself. So go ahead. So, so, so you have the journal, right? Mm -hmm. You have the gel pen. You have a velvet pouch, which I've yet to see a book come in a velvet pouch. Super fun. Right? Customized tissue paper. Of course, the thank you card. Of course, the customized box. I undersold this book so by so much money. Mm -hmm. I could never sell you another journal like this for $65. That's a fact. With but most people don't know that. Right. It costs me more to make this book. Wow, I didn't this, know that. This this the production, the quality, everything the book I have something called UV spotting on a book where the black part is matte. This is raised. These ribbons, these 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 uh corners right here. Mm -hmm. Um 
the tabs. You have a playlist attached to this book as well. Let me let me let me tell you. I'm not going to say that there was no profit made because that'd be a lie. There was absolutely profit made. Of course. But excuse me, but there's absolutely no way I would ever sell a journal like this for sixty five dollars and include a pen. I believe I want this to be an exclusive collection, and you'll never get a book from me for sixty five dollars. So also Mm. consider yourself blessed and lucky because I didn't know what I didn't know. And somebody could say that's that's pretty pricey for a book, not this book, not when you see it. Not that, not for real. Like it's, and I love it. And and the best advice was talk about your experience. So, what is it? Is it every week you go live on Amazon? So, um, oh, now we're going Amazon. Yeah, yeah, because I wanted. To, so okay. here's what I mean. Um, with the experiences, that's the thing about Tara's brand. Like you get one product, but you get Tara in regards to everything that she does. So. Getting the book. Um, oh, so I go live. Okay, so Amazon is separate. Correct. But every single Sunday at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we go live, we listen to the song, and we actually write in our journal. Yo, I love your integrity. I love who you are as a person. Let's let's get into that because I'll get the luxury because this, this is going to air when it airs. Mm-hmm. Talk about growth, evolution, and change. We're doing this in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. We're doing this podcast. But we ain't going to be here for too long. Right. We're not going to be here. We could talk about it, T, because you ain't going to be here. Right. So what's the next move for Tara? Um, what's new? What's well, next? What's today's date? Today is February 11th. Let's talk about how it's February 11th. I am moving to California in mm. a few weeks. Let's talk mm. about the fact that we didn't even secure a place yet to live. Like, let's get crazy yeah, with yeah, it. Let's get wild. Let's talk about the <laughs> fact that my apartment is not packed up. Right. I am moving to California to be with my fiance so that we could elevate to our next level in life. Love it. Um, I am so happy to be moving from the East Coast to the West Coast. But the craziest thing about this move is the fact that every single day, Omar is in the studio. Omar is producing. Omar is going to look for apartments. I'm over here working on Tara Mail, no gratitude, no glory, and all things above. Just got to deal with Amazon Live. So Boom. now I go live on Thursdays at 9 p.m. Boom. Eastern Standard Time. Catch and literally that. life is happening. And in a couple of weeks, I won't even be living here. I am officially moving to California. Ooh, can I get claps for that? Can I get claps for that? Can I get claps for that? And I love, look, and even that, like, talk about now, how did you get that Amazon? Like, to get on Amazon Prime or whatnot, I don't even know how you did that. Amazon Live. I'm, I'm sorry, Amazon mm-hmm. Live. What was that process like, you know? Um, there's a lot that I can't say. Okay, fair enough. Um, but I could say that I started off as an Amazon influencer, which is something that people can apply for. And most people get approved depending upon your social media. What I didn't know was that Amazon had been watching me, looking at me, and apparently just tracking what I've been doing. Mm. Not from Am- Maybe not from an Amazon standpoint, but from a brand standpoint. I was reached out to by someone who uh, is part creator of the Amazon Live program. And uh, she reached out to me. You know, she reached out to me and she said, listen, you know, I saw your brand. I saw this. I saw that. And the rest is history. But I think it just goes to show that when you are intentional about building your brand. Listen, all of 2021, Rob, I was in this apartment. I was in my office and I was working. Everybody was outside. It was 100 degrees. Everybody getting lit. It's post-pandemic. We still in pandemic. People acting like we're not. Everybody is doing what they do. And I'm literally home and I'm thinking about how to take my brand to the next level. Mm -hmm. Just now, about two weeks ago, I had a photo shoot. Revamping the Tara Show.com. I'm doing all of these things, not because somebody told me to. You know, trademarks, copyrights, doing everything I need to do. I'm doing things in my brand that people don't do until they get in trouble. Like, for real, for real. If Look, for those who are looking at this, or if you're watching this, if you're hearing this, I just want you to know you got a a taste of who Tara Davis is. I'm, I'm fortunate. This is a friend. I'm in her house. It's a phone call away. But she is who she is wherever she goes. Can you please tell these people where they can find you? Your, 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 um, your IG, is there anything, any candles that you want the people to know they can find you at? Yeah, absolutely. So my Instagram is The Tara Show. T H E T A R A H S H O W. The Tara Show. Where we actually do things for no gratitude, no glory is on Tara Mail. Mm. Okay? Um, once you find The Tara Show and you find Tara Mail, you pretty much got me. But I'm also on Twitter, Tara Mail. I am also on YouTube, Tara Mail. Uh, the Tara Show or Tara Milk, um, TikTok, The Tara Show. Copy. Basically, between those two, you'll find me on any platform. Love it. Is there any- Facebook. All of the above. Is there anything you want to leave? Any, is anything you want to mention that we probably didn't touch? Anything you want to like make sure you leave somebody with? And before you even get that, I just want to say I'm proud of you. 
Thank you, friend. I love you. Thank you. I, love I admire you. what you do. Keep doing what you do. Um, but yeah, if there's anything else you want to leave them with right before we go. Um, I think the only thing I would say is that my entire life has been full of a lot of opposition. Mm. But my opposition hasn't come from, or I can say when opposition does come, you won't find me on Facebook, you know, uh, beating somebody down or talking about the terrible. I share, I've I found a way to share my experiences, good or bad, but do it in a form of art. Um, Ooh, that, that's be- say that one more time. I found a way to share my experience, but to do it artistically. Yeah, it's beautiful. You know, like even talking about what happened here, there has to be an art to how you show up. Right. And what I would tell people is to master that, whatever that is for you to master that. Mm. Um, I also believe that there are a lot of people in this world who people will say things like the devil is trying me. You trying you. Mm. The devil is trying me. The devil's this, the devil's that. Sometimes it's not the devil. And sometimes your biggest devil is yourself. Mm. Let's just be real, and right? You're trying to point the finger somewhere else. Right. You're trying to point it somewhere else, but it's really you. Mm. But I also know that to whom much is given, much is required. There were so many uh, uh, issues and red tape. Before we even got to the production of this, there was so much that went wrong. So many dates pushed back for my journal. And, you know, you got two types of people. You could have the person who says, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. You could have the other mm. person who says, I must be birthed in something so big that it's supposed to be painful. Ooh. Birth is, n- I mean, I've never heard of a birth that was painless. It was like, especially if there were quadruplets in that bad book. Let me, I feel like you live four different lives. Too. Let me tell you something. And so I believe I've, you know, also mastered the art of being myself. And I know that a lot of people show up yeah, as their deep. representative. It's getting deep. When you master the art of being yourself, and that's why, you know, I posted something on my story the other day and I posted a very hard time in my life, you know, and it was a caption of me just saying, like, thank God I don't look like what I've been through. And I've learned to use my place. pain. But most importantly, you know, to take ownership. Mm. When you take ownership of the shit that hits the fan, mm. nobody else can use it against you. Mm. So if I'm leaving people with something, it's going to be, first of all, to believe in yourself. Secondly, stop being lazy. And third of all, get to the fucking bag. Yeah. Especially if you are a woman. See, y'all going to do it by, like, no matter what, a man is going to get to the bag. No matter what, he could have a family. He could, It doesn't matter. He's going to get to the bag. There's something about women sometimes that we feel like we have to dim our light. We have to be very small to shine a light on everybody else. Mm. Again, if you don't take anything from this conversation, I want you to take this. There's God, there's Tara, there's everybody else. Mm. Why? Because if I can't serve me, I can't serve you. Mm. I can't serve my spouse, right? When I get married, I can't serve my children. How yes. can I be? How can I be a good mother to my kids when I'm neglecting me? Mm. You know, one of the things that drives me crazy. I want my kids to be better than me. Yes, but also give them something to measure up to. Right. People, because I mean, a lot of people were at the bottom of the barrel. They've never done shit, so it's easy to be better than the negative. <laughs> like that comes so effortlessly. I'm just happy you, my friend. You know that? No, this is true. You're giving <laughs> <laughs> like, like, wow, so much depth. I'm sorry for even speaking. I feel like you was going. That was, <laughs> there's so much value, guys. Please do yourself a favor. Listen to this again if you need to. You know where to follow her. You know what she's offering. You know what she's going to be. We thank you so much. for Honestly, for even giving me the time to do this in a time like this. I can't say anything else. I'm, I'm honored. I'm grateful. Get your journals. We love y'all. We out of here. In the Living Room Podcast. Let's get it.